Hi, I'm Damien Key. In previous videos, we've seen how to make your robot do accurate turns. We're going to use that information to make our robot trace out some interesting shapes. The first shape I want my robot to do is a square. To make our robot trace out a square, the first movement it'll have to do is to drive forward. We then make the robot do a 90 degree turn, drive forward again, another 90 degree turn, drive forward again, another 90 degree turn, drive forward again, and finish up with another 90 degree turn to make sure we are pointing the same way we were starting. If we have a look at the plan, we can see that our robot will need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separate move instructions to make our robot trace out this square shape. Okay, let's put together this program. The first block will make the robot drive along the first side of our square. The duration will determine how large our square is going to be. I'm going to choose two rotations for the time being. Our second block is going to be used to make our robot turn 90 degrees. If you've watched one of our previous videos on simple angles, you'll know that this particular robot design requires a turn of 0.8 degrees to achieve a nice 90 degree turn. It doesn't matter if we go left or right, in this case here I'm going to choose a nice sharp turn to the left. The third block will be the same as the first block, making our robot drive forward for two rotations for the second side of our square. Fourth block, same as the second block. Again, a sharp turn to the left, 0 0.8 rotations. Fifth block will be another straight, two rotations. Sixth block will be another turn, sharp left, 0 0.8 rotations. That's our third turn in our square. Seventh block, another straight, two rotations. This is our fourth side of our square and our last block to get our robot facing the same way we started will be another sharp turn to the left 0.8 rotations. Let's download this program and see how we go. Not too bad at all. But what if we wanted our robot to drive in a hexagon? How many blocks would we need for that? Well, the hexagon has six sides and six angles, so we'll need 12 blocks for that. What about an octagon? An octagon with eight sides and eight corners is going to need 16 blocks. As you can see, the more sides we add to our polygon, the more blocks we're going to need. Our programs are starting to get quite large. What we really need is a way to simplify our program. If you look carefully at our square program, we can see there is a pattern involved. With the square, we make the robot drive forward and turn 90 degrees. These two blocks here are then repeated. Drive forward, turn 90 degrees. Drive forward, turn 90 degrees. Drive forward, turn 90 degrees. So our initial pattern of drive forward and turn 90 degrees is just repeated four more times to create our square. Rather than doing eight blocks, all we need are these first two blocks, driving forward and turning 90 degrees, and a way to tell the program to repeat this pattern four times. The way that we do this in the NXTG software is by using the loop command. This loop block here allows us to take instructions and repeat them over and over. So I've placed my loop at the start of the program, and I'm now going to take my two move blocks, my pattern for the square, and place them inside the loop. Now our robot will drive forward, turn 90 degrees, and this loop block will then take us back to the start again so we can run this pattern over and over again. At the moment, the loop block is set up to run forever. This means that our robot will continue driving forward and turning 90 degrees over and over and over again. Rather than doing this over and over again, what we really want is for our robot to do this four times. So rather than choosing the forever option, we're going to choose the count 
option. We'll change the count to four, and this will now make our robot go forward, turn 90 degrees, that pattern, and then repeat this four times. Let's try this program and see how it goes. As you can see, it looks exactly the same as when we use the individual blocks, but we have used a fraction of the number of blocks, making our program much simpler.